Hello, citizens of EDTP 580. This is Stephen Swan, your instructor. Uh, this is an introduction to your digital citizenship class, a class that I think you will find is a great deal of fun, um, that you, you will be able to learn a lot of new skills, um, as not only informational skills, like what is digital citizenship, but you will learn how to use some really exciting applications um, in this class that I hope you will feel like you can take back to your classrooms uh, and use. This is going to be a brief overview of what our class is about uh, and how it will work. Uh, I also will have a second part for those of you who are taking the class in a distance education mode. Um, I need to explain to you Collaborate and how it works. And in doing so, I hope we can make the use of Collaborate uh, a very simple process for you. Uh, Collaborate is a teleconferencing tool that Blackboard uses. It is not difficult to use. Uh, it can be a little difficult to set up the first time. Uh, I will be referring to you uh, from here on out as those good people from the great beyond. Uh, you will be fortunate in that you can join us uh, for the class with your fellow students in the class in a synchronous mode, meaning you're there doing the same time as everybody else is there. Or, because Collaborate actually films what is going on on the screen, and I pretty much stick to what is going on on the screen, um, you can sit back and view the class in your own space and in your own time. So, two parters. First part, everybody needs to watch. The second part, the only people who really need to stick around are the folks from Great Beyond, um, unless you just want to see how Collaborate works. So, without further ado, let's get going. When you go into our class in Blackboard, you are dropped here. This is known as the entry point. And basically all this is is an introduction to what the class is all about. This is lifted right out of the uh, catalog. Uh, for those of you who are going to be participating in our class from the great beyond, this is a very straightforward, simple video about how Collaborate works. I'm going to show you Collaborate here in just a minute, but I would urge you, if this is your first time, to watch my video, watch that video, so you can catch on to how everything works. As you can see over here on the left hand side is pretty much everything you need to know about accessing this class. Uh, we're in the start here. We drop down. There's your syllabus. Uh, the syllabus is very straightforward. It is dated um, and class uh, numbered. So each thing we do, every time we meet in the class, we're going to be doing something different except for class two and three. And I will show you that here in just a second. Um, drop down from that, there's a survey I'm going to ask you to do the first day of class next Wednesday, June 10th, from 12.30 to 3.30, I think, um, in room 201G, which is in the ERTC. You walk in the door, and you turn, and there's a glass wall, and that's our classroom. Those of you who will be attending... Uh, class in the great beyond the uh, collaborate session will be open one hour before class so you can if you're nervous about getting in and you're worried about what's going to happen uh, you can try that now this next bit of information is important for everyone and I really do mean this a lot of people don't think I mean this I'm now going to give you my text number my SMS um, and I want you to feel free to use it anytime, especially if you're in the great beyond and you're having problems. Um, you are to text me immediately, uh, preferably right bef before class, so we can resolve what it is. But if there's something going on, and if I can't fix it right away, um, you still have the video that you can watch. So this is my text number, 502 457 2937. It's on the syllabus too. Um, 
please, please do not hesitate. If you can't be uh, on time for class, let me know. There's no penalty. I just worry about you. And of course, if you can't be in class, let me know. When you send me the first text, just throw your name in there so I know who you are. All right, let's go over everything in the course and then we'll take a break and I'll come back and show off Collaborate. Uh, the first thing you see after the survey that we'll take, uh, it's a simple survey, is here are the announcements. Um, I like having announcements in my um, classes because it always gives me something fun to start each class off with. And also, please note, in Module 1, you're going to need to be looking at this uh, so that you can uh, write about it. And let me turn these on. There we go. So all the videos now come flying in and everything works. So this one in particular is something we're going to be looking at. Um, but mostly what I use the announcements for is just fun. Some of these uh, videos are hilarious. Now let's get down to the meat of everything so you can see how the class works. The class is essentially broken down into nine modules. Um, each module represents a piece of what we do in the class. So as you can see, Module 1 is titled Creating Our DC Presence. Notice each module will have a little introductory video. So you know what's going on before you ever hit the door. I strongly urge you to watch these. As you can see, this one's fairly long. That's okay, because it'll get you up to speed so that when you're in class, you can get things done. Um, one of the things, I have three simple rules. Rule number one, you're an adult, you're going to be treated like an adult. That means if the class is three hours long and you get everything done within the first two hours of class, you may get up and leave. Some of these modules, you'll be done in about an hour and you may get up and leave. Rule number two, which goes back to rule number one, I'm going to treat you like an adult. If you're not there on time, there's not going to be any penalty. I'm going to expect that you'll have sat down and watched this and you know pretty much what's going on. If you need to miss class, let me know. Um, as I said, here it is. It's sitting here. You can figure it out from watching these. And the last rule is no one of us is any smarter than all of us. That means after the first day, we all kind of get over the looking around. What is he going to be like? Oh, here's the syllabus. Well, we're going to get over that, and we're going to start talking to each other. Uh, we're not going to sit for three hours and listen to me yammer on. We're going to um, actually engage with each other and talk about what we're doing and look over each other's shoulders. It's the best way to learn. So as you can see, each class <laughs> is has a number, and that's a date there. That's 610. I don't know why the 6 doesn't come in. And then it basically tells you what we're doing. This is exactly what's in your live text. These are your assignments. Notice down here, the way you get it from your space that you're going to create, a thing called a wiki from Wikispaces. Watch the video. That's going to be where you put all of this that you create using a highly technical skill of copy and paste. If you understand how to do copy and paste, you're going to be fine in this class. The second module is where we actually get into the nitty-gritty of what do the nine elements of digital citizenship mean? What are they? You are going to become a part of this distributive learning class where you're going to own, probably with a partner, uh, we have all together, I think, 23 people. So we may be partnering up with someone in the, in the physically in the room with someone from the great beyond or the the people in the great beyond can partner up and people in the room can partner up. We'll work it out. But this is going to be where you're creating uh, an understanding for us of one of the elements of digital citizenship. Um, and as you can see, there is a framework for that. 
and you will basically be creating something called a voice thread. If you've been in Dr. Thomas's class or if you've been in Dr. Finch's class, you know all about this. You've done it with me before. So we find that this is a very powerful, powerful uh, tool to use. I think we'll have enough people we can actually buddy up, which makes it even better. And you can see it's a fairly complicated, uh, extensive assignment. Therefore, you are going to get two class periods to get this done. And there they are. The reason why, um, the other reason why I'm giving you 615 to get it done is we'll be having something called STLP camp going on uh, in the ERTC uh, for just those two days, Monday and Tuesday. Um, if you want to hang around and help out, work with kids, do technology, you'd be more than welcome. We're going to have a makerspace, etc., etc. If you cannot work at home on your project, and you would like to be there in the ERTC, we can find room for you. We can find room for you. But the idea of this is, is for you to have a chance to work uh, on this project. Uh, it doesn't take you that long. And once you understand what you're supposed to do. All right. That was module two. Already we're flying through all kinds of cool uses of technology. Module three, we kind of get back to sort of normalcy. Uh, we're going to talk about DC and the digital tattoo. What does the world know about you? Um, you'd be surprised how much you can find out about people. Module four is called DC and the law. This is very near and dear to my heart. This is all about copyright law and what it means for us as teachers. Module five is something we all think we already know about, and that is social media. But we're going to find out what does social media, what do, does social media know about us. And we're going to use something called PicoChart, which allows us to make an infographic that is going to basically um, talk about safe social media usage to your students. In other words, you're going to make something that you would share with your kids. And we're going to put that in a safe social media site called Edmodo that is allowed in the state of Kentucky by every school I know. Uh, DC and in the Unplug, this is digital health and wellness. This module is all about the things that people misuse and abuse using technology. Um, but we do do something really fun with this. We're going to take a quiz to find out about are you digitally addicted? But we're also going to create a digital story using one of three uh, tools. Uh, people really like this one. And these tools, are, again, as I keep reiterating, are freely available to use when you leave this class. We're skipping one of the modules and we're going on to module seven, DC and literacy. This module is all about using devices in our class. We're going to talk about uh, smart uh, tech, smart te technology and smart boards. We're going to show you a very simple way to build smart lessons, um, but we're also going to play with things like um, iPads and some of the tools that are on an iPad. This is, again, this one gets a lot of rave reviews from students. Uh, module 8 is all about uh, DC and the AUP, Acceptable Use Policy. This is where we're going to look at the acceptable use policies. I've pretty much got them all in here for just about every school district I th that's around us, uh, including um, um, a couple of uh, schools from the Archdiocese. So this one is essentially you're going to examine that AUP through the lens of digital citizenship and does it reflect digital citizenship in the AUP. And finally, our last module will be what we call DC in the PSA, the hallmark. And this is essentially we're going to use a tool called Animoto, which is just absolutely mind-boggling, breathtaking. And you're going to make a PSA. You're going to make a public service announcement using that tool. Your PSA will be uploaded into a uh, YouTube channel that we will be using. And you will uh, have an amazing wonderful um, YouTube PSA that you have made. We will give you 
the last two dates of class to get that done. Um, I do that so, as I call it, you can have some cleanup time if you need it. It will not take you two classes to make this Animoto. Trust me, you will not. Uh, I think the link can only be like 30 seconds to a minute long, which is pretty much what a PSA in reality is like. We'll talk about this. But I do give you an extra date there. So if there's anything that you need to go back and do, and that's part of the responsibility is you need to be reading these things to understand um, what you're going to be expected to do. That's why we have so many of these videos in here that tell you about what to do. Okay, before you hit the door in the class. Again, if you have any questions right now, do not hesitate. Pick up your cell phone and text me at 502-457-2937. If you have something that's going to come up during the class, like I can't be there because that weekend's when we go up and celebrate Grandma's 90th birthday. Tell me now. Just let me know now. And as you can see, there it all is. You're covered. Everything you need to know before you ever step in the door is sitting right here. Okay, uh, this ends the first part of this uh, little uh, email video. The second part is going to go over Collaborate. So I'll go ahead and stop it right now. All right. As promised, the second part of this video is dedicated to the people in the great beyond. Um, this won't take long. I'm going to show you how the Collaborate will work for our class. So the first thing you will do is you will log in to our Blackboard presence. You will go over here to where it says EDTP 580 Collaborate. You will click on that link. That will then take you to this link and here's that video again um, so you can watch it to get the get your full understanding of collaborate but this is the link that takes you into collaborate and I'm going to click on it and what it will do is as you can see the room is already available and I'm going to go ahead and click on join room and when I do that this is the part that will that can trip you up. So watch carefully. I'm sitting here on a Macintosh. So on my Macintosh, it is wanting to open a little application. It's a Java app called meeting.collab. Collab. On a PC, it will be called join.collab. Okay? And I'm going to say... Go ahead and open this. Now, if this had been the first time that I had done this, what would happen next is it would have gone in and it would have said, I am downloading the join or the meeting, depending upon the platform. And it would then go ahead and then launch that. You saw it just pop up there a second ago. Now, first thing you're probably noticing is this doesn't happen very fast. And I want to tell you, I'm sitting on a very fast computer and a very fast connection. So you need to plan and think that you can't just pop in at 1230 and think you're going to go right in here. It's going to take a good, uh, I'm guessing, five minutes, depending upon where you are. Now, Pay no attention to these this box in the upper right. That comes up because I'm I'm the moderator, the owner of this, and it's telling me it says, "Hey, stupid, you need to start recording." And uh, that's the beauty of what'll happen is I record everything that happens on this screen, and the way it looks looks like this. And this will all be set up and ready to go. In other words, you won't see me do that. This will all be sitting here like this. And, of course, it won't be in the Collaborate. It'll be over here in whatever module that we're using. And it will be showing through uh, your Collaborate pane. In, in Collaborate, you must go through and do the audio setup wizard. Uh, if you don't, 
Um, you don't know what's going to happen when you use it. Secondly, you must, 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 one more, must wear headphones. I don't care if they're, you know, the Apple White Buds or if it's a big old honking cans that you put on your head. I don't care what it is. You must, must wear headphones. Otherwise, your computer will get a nasty feedback going from the, the volume coming out of the computer speaker then being picked up by the uh, microphone on your computer and you'll get a really, you'll sound like you're coming from outer space. That's why I call it being in the great beyond. Um, I know that some people are pretty tech savvy and they know how to turn their PCs on so that you can ignore that, uh, that feedback loop. Um, if you know how to do that, <laughs> more power to you. Uh, on a Macintosh, you can't do it. So get yourself a pair of headphones. The third thing to realize is if you want to participate in the class in a um, through collaborate you must use the talk button over here now if you're if you're unwilling to use the talk button and I understand why um, come down to the chat window and you can type in things now I will warn you that what we try to do in the classroom while this is going on is I'll find somebody in the room who is uh, a nerd like me and I'll say would you mind monitoring the chat window and collaborate for me during the class because I don't see very well and I can't be doing three things at once but the chat window will become your first line of hey what does this mean or what's going on but please feel free to use your talk so that you know you can interrupt you can say uh, Steve I need to okay don't hesitate to do that um, it's really funny because you'll come booming through the speakers in the classroom and everybody kind of jumps the first time anybody does it what you will have what you will find is every time before I start class I'll see all the people over here listed in the class roster and I will basically jump in real fast and go uh, let's just do a quick test uh, everybody say hello okay we just kind of go through that real fast um, and usually I also have a little chat message at the beginning to remind you of, of where we are and what we're doing for that class now at the end of every class um, I close out the session and it automatically saves to here Notice that Collaborate <laughs> video is here, too. You kind of get the sense I want you to watch that, don't you? Um, this, as you can see, is, is last spring's. This is how it looks. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can open one here. The other reason why I... Oh, that's right. It's last spring, so it's not going to open. My bad. Um, it will come up in a full-blown uh, window. And it has, if you'll give it a minute or two to fully load in, it has a slider across the bottom, just like in YouTube. And you can slide that slider across, you know, if, if Steve is talking way too much and you just want to get, get to the point of it all. You can slide that slider around to see what's going on. This gives you the opportunity, as I have said, to enjoy the class in an asynchronous mode where you're basically taking the time when you want to to watch the videos, and to do the classwork. Okay, that's it. Um, again, watch the videos about Collaborate. Uh, go in and try it before class. Go ahead and get your little join.collab or your meeting.collab. Download it to your computer. And that way, when you go to join the class again, it should just go in and, and start up. Be aware that... Um, Three things happen when you start a Collaborate session. You basically, uh, your computer is going and trying to find the Collaborate session. Second, it is then launching the Collaborate session. It is also going to come up and say, are you sure you want to run this? Uh, because it's a Java app and Java apps have security issues. So you may have to tell it to run. Um, if you have problems, do not hesitate to drop me a line.
this email that contains this video is going to have uh, some attachments to it that have to do with here are the things that you need to know about taking a course uh, in the online from the great beyond uh, here at the University of Louisville. Alrighty, you know how to reach me. 502-457-2937. Text me if you have any questions about anything that we just did. I will see you next Wednesday.